Um, happy Easter if that's your thing. Um, here, here in Maine, and we got the power on, so we're back down in the studio. We're gonna do the tulips today. It's gonna be fun and easy. Can't go wrong. I just wanted to show you that I did get from Dick Blick is where I do my ordering when I want a mass quantity of things. Um, like paint and stuff like that, and my paper I usually get there. But I picked up these uh, Van Gogh um, pastels, which are going to be a little a little step up from clothes. what I had before. Oh, like this? Mm. Okay. And um, they were normally $44. They were $22. So if you can grab them, it's worth it. And this is a nice pastel paper. has that little bit of tooth. And I put that on here today because we decided that maybe it would be helpful if, if what I was drawing was a little bit bigger. Um, and it also is nice with your pastels because it will help that for you to build up layers of color because it has a little more tech, you know, surface area to like suck that color in there. Okay? That's a suggestion. Good, good decent paper, decent materials will really make your pictures better no matter what. Even if you don't get any better at what you're doing. It will just look better. Um, getting the best is always, you know, great, but I can't afford the best. So I get in the middle because that's like, okay. With the flowers, what we want, we're going to start with the vase. And I want you to have a big enough vase. You want to look at your bouquet of flowers and feel like the vase is substantial enough to hold these flowers without tipping over. And we're going to have a nice full assortment even you know and that would be in the like art of flower arranging I mean you don't want to make a big fancy thing with all kinds of expensive flowers and then you know have it roll off the table so you have to have something solid there okay um, I am going to use the gold here as my color to sketch things out with okay obviously I have the gold in the background um, it'll work with what I'm going to do for my shadow. It obviously um, works well with green because green is blue and yellow mixed together and this is yellow. And the thing about the purple, well actually probably by the time we get to the purple I'll draw those in with purple anyway. But the thing is is that purple and yellow together make brown so all it does is kind of make it a little more of a natural, it kind of subdues the color just a little bit. So it also works pretty well with that. Okay? Alright, let's do it. So. I'm going to say that from top to bottom, this part of the base is about in the middle. Okay, so you find, oh, I see what my problem is. What? My contacts are in, and so now it's all foggy up here. You can wear your glasses. Still looks good. <laughs> yeah, and that, they got fingerprints all over them now. Okay, so I'm going to find the middle, all right, and what I want you to do is in the middle, if not a little tiny bit lower, but don't go any higher. Okay, so find the middle. I want you to give me a line like this. You draw as lightly as you can. I will draw darker so that you... Oh, good. Daffy's painting is already covered in paint. I'll draw a little darker so you can see it, but you draw lightly. I'm also going to draw a spot where I want the, bot the base of the, the base to be. So I'm going to go up from the bottom. I don't want it here. This doesn't make any sense. I want to feel like there's a substantial amount of table to hold my base on it. So I'm going to go up about maybe right there. And I'm going to make a line, okay? So you do that part. I'll do it down here with uh, my mama. On your, oh. Wait a minute. Oh, yeah, there. Okay, same thing here. I'm going to find top to bottom. I'm going to find the middle. Maybe cheat down just a tiny bit. I'm going to make a line here. I'm going to go from the bottom. I'm going to go up an inch or two. And I'm going to make a line right here. Now, our, our thing is, is that we want to make the vase... Um, not only substantial, but we want to make it symmetrical, meaning that it doesn't lock, lean to one side or another. If yours does, then perhaps someone made it out of clay, and is who is and not a ceramic. A ceramic class. that's a little wacky, and you know what? That's okay. Mm -hmm. This one is a little off too. Oh, actually, and by the way, this is by Angela Moulton, is the painter, and oh, beautiful, beautiful paintings. Check them out if you have a chance to. Okay. We're going to take this, we're going to make it a little bit into a picture, but what I want you to do is I want you to round this up just a little bit, okay? All right, and the same thing, you're going to round the base, give it, you know, a good size flat bit, but then you can round it up a little bit. Are these, do these look like these are about the same to you? Yeah. Okay, all right. Make these about the same, 
okay? So I'm gonna, this is gonna be a little small because I have a smaller piece of paper here, and then I'm gonna round this a little bit, okay? All right, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark where about the widest part of my base is gonna be, okay? And I'll look at that, say maybe right about here, and maybe right about here. And then we'll have to look to see if that's right. Does that look about right? Yes. Okay. I'm not going to actually touch this line, but I'm going to start right here, and I'm going to bring to that line, and I'm going to come here, and I'm going to bring to that dot like this. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do this and do this. It's the same thing when we're doing eyes on a face. Do part of one eye and part of the other eye, and then work like that because you're more likely for things to come on symmetrical. Okay? And then I'm going to come down like this and down like this, and hopefully it looks like a rounded jug, but that also has enough of a flat bottom that it looks like it's going to stay on the table, not roll off. And also, in general, you want the base to be slight, you know, at least as wide as the mouth of your base because if not, um, if this if you're wider up here, again, it's gonna be something that's gonna fall over. And we don't we don't even visually we don't really want to see that. Okay? So here I'm gonna mark a little bit here and here and I'm gonna round out to that line on both sides and then I'm gonna round and then I'm gonna bring that down. So hopefully I have a nice base. Oops, that looks a little wackadoo, right? Okay. It might it might not hurt for you at this point to just hold your paper up in front of you and then you can kind of see if it's leaning. And if it's leaning a little bit, adjust it. Because you can always make a black base if you have to color it in and like, you know, cover up a line that you had to change or whatever. You, know, you can always make it darker if you have to. Okay, this is what we're going to do next. We're going to make it have a little bit of a spout on one side. So you're going to take this piece and you're just going to drag that out a little bit more. Okay? And then bring that down like this, okay? Looks a little bit like a spout. If you don't want it to have a spout, you know, you can still do the same thing and just do it on both sides. All right, on the other side, we want to have a handle. And this is a pretty skinny handle for something this big. Don't, you know, it doesn't have to be super tiny because you don't want the feeling that if you picked it up full of milk, that the handle would break right off because it's so heavy. So give it something that, you know, to hold on to. I'm going to take, this goes up near the bottom, so maybe make a mark knowing where I want to go. And I'm going to come from this line, and I'm going to go out and around, down like that. Okay, and then I'm going to start right here. So this line that you made, you know, the outside of the base, I'm going to get that up close enough to this one so that there's, we're going to leave just a little, um, this will be like the lip of the, the top of the thing where it folds over. Okay, so you're going to use that for the inside of the handle, okay? All right, so I took this one, I found a little spot where I want that to go, and then I'm gonna bring it out and around. We're having broken sewing machine issues here today. The sewing machine is a very finicky beast. I can't sew, but. That never, that part of it did not appeal to me. Okay, and then what you're taking is this part of the handle, hopefully that's pretty close to the top, and you're just gonna connect this all the way across like that, and that's gonna be the little lip on the top. Okay? Okay. Okay. This is one of the things that when you're drawing, you have to do it a little bit different than, than like if you were painting, because you can add these highlights and stuff on the top, and but when you're drawing, you have to account for those white things. You have to save something, you know, in the beginning. All right? Okay, then the other thing I want you to do, we want to have a table for these things to sit on. And um, I am going to put, this is always kind of a neat thing, is that if I go to the inside of the handle and I make a line here and here, then what happens is that I have maybe a color here and a color here, which is a nice thing to have in that little space of the handle. I think that's a neat little thing that's a little different here. So if it doesn't make sense with your picture, don't do it. All right, but I'm going to do that. I'm going to divide that up. Okay. 
And then, so I don't forget, I want to mark kind of where the shadow's going to go. And that's going to come right off the bottom and go over like this. And then, you know, you're thinking about the width of the base. So it's probably something like this. And um, you could just bring that to the edge. I think that'll be fine. Okay. Because this is causing quite a, that's, it's, this is the vase and it would also be the flower. So it's going to, we'll just bring it right off the side like that. The shadow is key though, okay? It's important and it's such an easy thing, but it makes a big, 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 big difference. All right, we got a vase. Let's, I know that we're anxious to get the flowers on there. So let's do a little bit. We're just gonna sketch the flowers out, save a little space for the greenery. Then I think we'll go, um, I don't know. I guess we'll decide. We'll decide later. I haven't decided yet. So grab whatever you want for your flowers. You know, maybe you want to make them different colors. If you want, you know, I really like yellow tulips. Mm. But I'm not going to draw yellow tulips. I'm going to draw purple ones. But if I did want to draw yellow tulips, the one thing I would want to change is I wouldn't want my background to be yellow. Okay? The great thing here is that, like I said, purple and, or uh, purple and yellow are opposite. So this is like the perfect choice of a background to like, you know, make purple, make it so that purple can do its thing. Um, like when we did something just recently was the blue and the orange, oh, oh kind of like the boat, the lobster boat with the orange on there. Okay, so let's do it. Um, with, with, the, with these flowers being here, this is not a ton like it, but a little bit. One of the things you want to think about is that, you know, you've got a big mass of flowers in this vase. So, um, they're going to overlap each other. Uh, some are going to be taller, shorter, and also the greenery is going to overlap a little bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. So before we go crazy coloring the green, the um, purple, and I want to put the green in there. So don't jump too far ahead if you're going super fast. The shape okay. of the tool. <laughs> Thanks for the support, Dad. Um, I the shape of the too fast. tulip is a little bit, um, you know, almond shaped or whatever. And it's also sort of, there's two sort of styles, U shape, almond shape. I'm going to do both kinds. We'll start with one, like right about as tall as I want to go right up in the, right up in the middle. And in this one, what you're going to do is make yourself kind of a U shape that comes up to the top. I mean, more, um, horseshoe shape. And then, because these are, they're kind of closed in and they also have, they just have a whole bunch of petals that are all coming together like this. So when they open up, um, they're still all coming down to the base. So what you do is you start here and you make, wait, wrong way. Yeah, okay. This way. Okay. And you go over to the other side with that line. And then when you do this one, you just bring that in like that. Okay, and then it looks a little bit like it's just starting to open up. Okay, and then the other way I wanted to do, then the other way would be, um, I'll put one right up here too, is that you bring, you know, one side like this and the other side like that. So kind of that almond shape. And then you just bring this line down a little closer to one side like that. Um, you can make it with a U shape that's a little more open, okay? And you can bring this over like that, and then over like this, and then one in the middle, okay? So you can do all one way, or you can try different ways or whatever, um, but you're thinking about this, you know, array of flowers that are bursting out of the vase. We don't want to have three in this great big vase. We want to have lots of them. Um, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in this. Um, so do a few, um, put something down in here. I kind of like that one, so I'm going to do that again. So I make a, a U shape that kind of comes together at the top. I round away. These are going to be all relatively the same size, I think. Okay. 
Um, and sometimes it's nice to have one. I've had people do one that kind of hung right off the side, like was too heavy, and that looks actually really, really cool. It, it does something different. I don't know what it is, but I'm just gonna add a, something out on the side here a little bit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you think I need one in the middle? Oh, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna overlap like a, one. Uh, what were you gonna say? One that's kind of like leaning forward. But I don't know how oh, to do that. Oh, yeah. I tried. Oh, too late now. All right. Okay. Yeah, that'll do it for me. Okay, like I said, before we start coloring these in, I want to, you to take a green um, maybe something on the lighter side. And what I want you to notice, because this happens all the time, is that look at the area between the flowers and the pot, the vase, because it's all green. Obviously there's different shades of green, but it's all green. There's no spaces between. Because you've got not only kind of thick stalks, but you've also got all the leaves in there, and that's what's holding it all up. So don't just think you're going to go to each flower and draw a stem in here. There's more to it than that, okay? And also you just, otherwise you'd color yellow around everything. So I might, I'm going to bring things in or in or out or whatever. Like maybe I was thinking, oh, there's a stem on that guy right there. But I also want um, some, what am I calling these? Leaves. Leaves? Yeah, they have leaves. Yeah. Skinny leaves. Okay, some li leaves. These are kind of long and skinny. Um, and like maybe, I don't have a great place to do it, but I could come over that flower a little bit. Um, I just want to remember that I'm... Place where I can go over the flowers a little bit with the greenery, then maybe I will, like right here, maybe. It just overlaps things a little bit. So I'm putting a little bit of green down here, not super dark. Um, put some stem leaves out, okay? Cool, I forgot all about down here. Oops. You did. Okay, so let me, let me try that again. So I'm gonna do this. Some passion. people are really, really, they do it all the time, they do a great job, so I'm just winging it. But I've done this, this um, painting as a, well, as a painting, I've done this, what, what is it called? What do you mean? This artwork. I've oh. done this picture, that's a picture, <laughs> as um, a painting of a lot, because it's all right, it's a little bit different when you're, so fun. When you're drawing. Okay, um, let's do the vase. Actually, what I'm gonna do with the vase is that I'm gonna um, make, in my new box, I don't have a gray. So, one thing you can do is use kind of a cool brown and put some white with that, maybe a little light blue, that'll work well, but I don't really have light blue in my new colors. <laughs> I have light blue, but I don't have a circle light blue. No, I don't. Oh, yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, a little purple and a, a little purple and a little teal because those are like my favorite colors. And I'm going to take these two, and when I mix them together and then I put a little bit of white on top, I'm going to wind up with kind of a grayish color. Okay. 
So let's look at this. And actually, I'm going to take these two colors, and uh, this purple obviously is going to be with here, but I'm also going to use this one in another place. I'm going to put a little bit of it in my, um, my what is this called? Stems and leaves. Greenery. Greenery, because that will help kind of tie colors together because it's all well and good to be, you know, draw everything perfectly and perfectly with the right color. But what you're trying to do with a still life in anything, but particularly with a still life, is bring the whole world together. And so um, a little bit of, you know, whatever you have, the little purple here, you want a little purple somewhere on your cloth, you want it maybe in your vase. It's all because there's reflected light, like light is coming in, hitting something, it's bouncing off and hitting onto your tablecloth, and then hitting the tablecloth and hitting, going back to the vase. So there's always this, um, if you really, really start to study it, you will see these colors in there. And so it, it's helpful to make, um, you know, even if you don't draw the most realistically, if you can kind of tie this world together. So what, where I'm using the teal here, now what I'm going to do is take it and so where my shadow is going to be, I'm going to bring this right over this um, over line. Okay, so I'm going to put a little here and then I'm thinking about on my vase what I want is like maybe about a third, but a, like a half circle and right around the bottom here too. Okay, I'm also going to put it on the outside of my handle, maybe most of the handle, just because if my light is up here, these flowers are going to cause um, a shadow on there, too. Okay, maybe right down here. Not super dark, because I want to mix something with it a little bit. Okay, I'm going to bring this down here. Okay, and I'm just going to put a little bit of that on there, real light. Okay, and now I'm going to take my purple. And I'm going to put a little purple on top. All right. Okay. How's it paint? How's it going over there? Daphne's doing a little painting today. Mm-hmm. So I have good. all kinds of paint mixed up for all my classes. And then now I don't have any painting classes in my house right now. And it's going to start to dry up. Oh, it, it's drying a little bit. I had some water, but it also starts to stink. Yeah, it does smell kind of bad. It smells kind of funky. It gets like bacteria in there Gross. and stuff. So I'm going to go over this gold line with this purple a little bit too. Like that. All right? Okay. So you want a, con con a continuous shape of color that kind of goes around like this because this will be a, you know, and along the bottom. And the, the more you put it around the bottom, the more it's going to feel like there's a part that sticks out here. Okay, and then I'm going to take my white, and uh, I'll put a, blend that a little bit, and this will blend these colors, and it will look a little grayish, only better because, you know, purple. it's because it's, yeah, it's, it's pretty colors. Okay, so, and I could color this right onto the part that's going to be white. even though it's white paper. Kids always, well, not even just the kids. <laughs> People, when I wear, wear painting and I make them paint things white, they're like, but the paper's white. Why would I paint it white? Like, just, just do it, bear with me. But you don't have to. The thing is when you're doing um, watercolors, you don't paint in white. So you have to be very thoughtful and patient and, and remember to save your white parts, which... That's why we don't use which, watercolor. Which is not something that comes easy to me. So I, I don't use watercolors very often. Actually, I mean, At all. when? Um, when was the last time? I don't know. But it was the one class, well, not maybe not the one. Yeah, but, yeah. It was my worst class when I was in college was my watercolor. Class, the teacher made me come in and have a meeting and told me I didn't know how to draw and I didn't know how to um, paint with watercolors. And I definitely didn't know how to paint with watercolors and I thought I was doing all right. <laughs> well, I, little did I know. So well, he, was, reality he was never my favorite teacher. That's probably why I still don't like it though. So I don't like, didn't like that guy. 
All right, down here what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the purple. So that's going to be using the purple from the flowers. I'm going to put that on my shadow. All right. What do I want down here? Yeah. This one is definitely not as exciting. I'm doing black and white. That's still good. I want to bring that dark color right under the base of my um, base, too, my jug, because that helps to pull it down. And then I'm going to use the um, gold again, and you'll see that it makes kind of a brownish color, okay? okay? So just like with painting, at this point, what I would want to do is consider the background a little bit before I go and do the things on the front. Okay, uh, I'm not going to color uh, uh, all of it in there, but I'm going to um, do a couple of things that I think are important. It, um, down here with the black and white, I'm going to put a little shading like this, so it goes about a, you know, maybe a quarter of it, a third of it. Okay. And... Um, I want to say the name of that teacher. Probably not. Uh, I think idea. he's passed on. So I can let it go. Yeah. But, you know, he was right. I probably didn't draw very well. Who knows? <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing when I went to art school. Was it your I first year at Racy? Yep. I mean, I had. I had uh, Taken a couple of college classes my senior year in high school because you could do that. I'm gonna take an eraser and erase right in here a little bit. I took those at UMaine, and then I went to school for in at Colorado State for a year. And um, nobody told me there. I could, nobody told me there I couldn't draw. But I'll tell you, it was the photography teachers. Boy, they're terrible. They hate everything everybody does. Or at least in the olden days, because it was, you know, you know, real darkroom photography, and they take themselves pretty seriously in those days. But okay, oh, I didn't finish that. Um, and then I transferred to RISD, and yeah, but I learned every everything I know from there, everything. So but I don't care. I guess if you know somebody had told me I was terrible, then. Things you're good at, things you need to work on. It's just the way it is. Uh, okay, so down here, I want to have this have a little, you know, and over here it gets a little bit darker because that, I'm just blending that shadow in there, a little lighter over here, but that's all nice. You're just looking for, in your drawing, you're looking for something that's the white of the paper, something that is as black as your whatever you're drawing with can go just absolute dark and then as many different shades of grays in between i think many you know that would give you um unless you're going very high contrast would be very black and very white or whatever but we're looking for the, all those shades of gray um okay i'm gonna so we're what i want to do this was just one of the things i was thinking about is that to get rid of this line that kind of is the outside of my base, what I would do is take this gold, and when I take the gold and I spread it out into the background, the idea would be is that the line becomes the background and stops being just an outline of an object. Because in reality, the whole world is not um, you know, full of lines outlining everything. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, it works a little bit here. I would, you know, need to do the same thing down, down here as well. Is it working? It is working. Okay. So, I don't want to do my cloth, my tablecloth, and my wall exactly the same. Oh, yeah, and then I wanted to do it over here, too. So what, I, what I'm going to do with this is I have, oh, I have a couple of yellows. Ooh, great. Okay. So I'm going to take 
this bright yellow. I don't know if these have names. That would be cool. Huh, light yellow. <laughs> Creative. Okay, but I can bring a little nice bright yellow up here. And maybe I'll run this little pocket. These little spaces, these negative spaces that are created are great little things to um, a little spot of color and there we go. Okay. So I could keep going. I'm not gonna go all around all of this right now. Okay. Um, and then all what I'm gonna do, and then I have this other one. What are we calling this? <laughs> Deep yellow. Fancy. I'm gonna use this down here. Ooh, it's very orangey. Okay. So that I have the, of the yellow, but I'm varying a little bit. Always fun to use. So you get all those colors, might as well try them out, right? Right. <laughs> you support me, Daphne. And that's what I'm here for. That's what she's here for. You're like my Ed McMahon. Mm. Do you even know who that is? Nope. Um, I'm trying to think of a current. What's it from? The straight man. Well, it's from the Johnny Carson show. He must be the one that would do, laugh at all the jokes and stuff like that. He must be the laugh at the jokes. How's that working? That working okay? That looks good. All right. I like it. All right. I'll put a little yellow up top. Just keep it fresh. I don't need to color everything all in. Okay. Um, and down here, all right, so we're just, just going to do the flowers and then, um, um, you know, a little more with the green and we're going to call it good. So, so what you're looking for with your flowers, hopefully, are two, are three different shades, a deep one, a medium one, and a light one. Okay, so if you have, um, you know, you can use a white to be the light part, which I think is what I'm going to do because my, the two pinks I have are very close, close. I don't know if I have another purple. Yeah, I do. I have. I think this dark one is the one that I used. I'm just gonna have to not. I'm not gonna use that one anymore. But I'm gonna use this one a little bit. So if the light is coming from here, then for the most part, you know, maybe all of your flowers are gonna have a little, little be a little bit darker on the left side. So you can color them in like this. Um, if you have a light touch and you have a lot of white behind, um, then you don't even really have to think about that third color, third shade or whatever, but just have, I mean, if you want to color one color, do it. But if you want and you have a bunch of purples or whatever color you're using, you know, make, make them the color of the rainbow. Make one of every color there is. Why not? Who doesn't love the rainbow? Right? Right. I mean, who doesn't love a rainbow? Really? I don't know. I get crazy when I see a rainbow. <laughs> I really do. And I, when I know it's coming, I can see like in the late afternoon and the sun comes out after it's been raining and I know when it's coming, I get all excited. I want to go out my field and look around and see if I find one. Just something so miraculous about it, isn't it? Yeah. All right, so I'm going to put a little purple on there like that. Um, I'm going to blend maybe a little pink on the other side. It doesn't really matter. It's, it's like a tulip is not the shiniest thing in the world. It's not going to have like a really shiny... Um, Reflection? Yeah, yeah. Like a, like a highlight, like... Mm, give me an example. A bottle like might have that really white highlight on it. All right. There, I remembered that time to leave some of the green. Oh, that didn't look great in there. Well, I don't know why it worked. Oh, I know why it worked better. When I practiced it, I did the flowers in gold, so that when I drew the leaves over, the leaves, the purple didn't show through. Uh. I wonder why it didn't work. Yeah, I didn't want to waste. Everybody's time drawing things in colors they don't want to draw in. So I didn't come. Okay, so I'm going to take a white now and adjust 
blend a little bit here and there on that. I mean, I think when in doubt, take a nice dark color and um, define them a little bit. And that means kind of, you know, sort of outlining them. Does this work better? I like it being bigger. Yeah, I think it looks good. Hey, is my cousin Lynn watching? She, she did. She said, Happy Easter, everyone. <sighs> it's nice when I have somebody I can be thinking and talking to. Is my daughter Ruby watching? Uh, my daughter I see Veronica. I think I saw Ruby in the beginning. I don't know. Yeah, but we can't be together on Easter. No. That's all right, though. Yeah. You don't seem too <laughs> hot hot about it. There were a lot of years of Easter, Easter fights, yeah. <laughs> Easter egg hunts that Veronica kicked at. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> that sounds kicked like butt on. <laughs> I have a set of twins, and one of them is really, really good at the Easter egg hunt. The other, a little bit more at a slower pace. And so one always had way more. Always, always. From the time she was like. I think the first time they ever did it was when they were maybe two, and even then she found all of them. They were, Grammy had hidden little those little chocolate eggs all around, and they were just all in plain sight. And <laughs> it was just like cleaning up, and Ruby was like talking about stuff, <laughs> and that just continued. Yep. And then like pictures of Calvin chasing Daphne down, kicking her. <laughs> Ah, good times, good times. <laughs> Lots Easter of times we had spirit. snow. We have snow today. Yeah. And then I gotta Smelting. Cook. Then I gotta cook some big meal, which... Who cares about that? It's alright when you go to somebody else's house, though. Okay, so I'm gonna find... I'm gonna use the greens I haven't used yet. Because I wanna use everything I have. Oh, I didn't use this one, the puke green one. Don't what are they it calling it? Green. Wouldn't that be great if it actually said puke green on it? Is your puke green? Sap green. Sap. Sap green. I want to get right where everything goes in. This is the last thing we're going to do. Um, right where everything goes into the base, you want to be nice and dark. And I, I, I really recommend that you get this area filled in with greens. Like Pick all your greens and try them out. Fill it in there because it will make more sense. And then, you know, a little something up at the top. I think, anyway. What do you think, Al? Yeah. yeah. These colors I've are... I've seen a lot of different... Working. Of course, I've seen beautiful, beautiful paintings of this painting that are totally... did it a totally different way. So it's not like you can't. I mean, that's one thing about art, you know. There's no one way of doing it. And there's not one way that looks good. We tend to think that photorealism is the only thing that you're a striving to be able to do, but I'll tell you, it's not. You know, take a picture like, you know, maybe your, you know, your four-year-old kid drew for you, and how it might just be hit you just in such a way that it, it makes you very emotional. It's like, well, it doesn't look like photorealism, is my guess, but it totally moves you, and that's really all that matters. You know, that's what you're looking for. Mm. This one, you know, we, you want to, I think one of the other things I'm always thinking about is, you know, doing it enough and enjoying it, because if you, you don't want somebody, you don't want to do a drawing that people look at and be like, ugh, that looks painful. <laughs> person suffered through that that's not how, you know you don't want that I mean that's a different kind of art anyway you know when you do want that because there's you know there's situations when you are an angst ridden artist and you want the world to know then it's there's a place for that but probably not with a pitcher full of tulips mm, that right? would be a challenge <laughs> to make them really angsty yeah well you know classic put a little blood dripping from the tulips <laughs> The corners of the tulips. <laughs> Where are you been? Uh, ah! What are you trying to say? No corners, on, no corners on an almond? 
I'm not exactly sure what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Um, you're, yeah. It could be done. It could yeah. be done. I'm not saying, I'm just saying it'd be a challenge, yeah. I don't know. You, I don't know if you. Somebody out there wants to take on that challenge of making angsty tulips. Angsty tulips. Oh, I know too. You could make them very like sparse. And, oh like, yeah, dying. Yeah. Um, that would be there's good. There's lots of things that you could do. That's all. And so covered in snow. With. <laughs> yeah, blood is a little heavy-handed. Yeah, that's a little but obvious. What is the thing that I have the kids do and they always can we put blood on it? Monsters. Of course. Um, I think I think um, dragon teeth sometimes and stuff. Oh. It's probably those butt kids. They probably want to put blood on and stuff. All right. And then I want a little. I want things to get dark down here. All right. How is that? Is that okay? So yeah, that looks nice. Again, if you're doing something with black and white, take your eraser at the end. Get a little highlights. Here, maybe right here, if you can. Sometimes with an eraser, you have to erase a little bit more than you want to. You just have to go back and touch it back up again. But that will help to make, if you get super dark, right where the white of that lip of the vase is, you go right along there in a nice smooth line, right here, it will look like the flowers are going inside. Okay? This one, let me see, I think I have this even darker one. If I can't get it any darker with that, I could use, um, I think it's the last thing, you ready to, I could use a blue, ah, it's probably, my paper has reached its limit. Mm. Okay, all right, so I don't know what I'm doing tomorrow, I'll have two, three new pictures for us to do um, the next three days, um, I'll figure that out later today, and uh, thanks so much for, um, for, for watching and here's here's this if you want to leave oh hey linda linda's painted this before oh and robin has two those are two people that did an excellent excellent job when we were at governor's uh and and alicia hey how are you oh oh and cynthia oh my god all my favorite people that can't come to all my support me with my painting classes okay if you want to make a donation, ValerieWallsFineArts.com, ticket page, you can leave a donation for as little as a dollar. Um, and um, I think that's all you need to know for now. And if you want to watch them, other ones, it's on my playlist. Or just ask me, I'll give you a link to it so, so it's easy.